Good morning. Um, I'm here to make a prediction. I predict that the medical community will lead in bringing green industries to life to decrease carbon emissions and reduce the worst consequences of global warming. I think the medical community will be an engine of innovation in bringing the new clean energy economy to scale. Since World War II, the medical community has brought at least five industries to scale. Pharmaceuticals, medical devices, biotech, medical informatics, medical supply, at least five. And in that period of just over 60 years, we have arguably made more advances in medicine than the 2,000 years that preceded them. We can see that in our own lives. I'm from southwest Minnesota from Marshall, and I went into healthcare because I was sick as a child. I had asthma, and when I think back, uh, what, what happened to me when I had a bad asthma attack? I got a shot of adrenaline. A young girl growing up in Marshall, Minnesota today with asthma would never get a shot of adrenaline. There are so many other tools available earlier. And my father is a Lutheran minister, so I grew up hearing every night about his trips to visit people at the hospital, uh, hearing about someone who was in for exploratory surgery. Uh, we, don't, we don't hear about that anymore with all the imaging available. Hearing about people with mental illness who were really um, in a hospital for their whole life, but there was really nothing to treat them who now are able to get diagnosed and have a wonderful array of treatments available. And I've seen it as a parent. Uh, my husband and I have three active sons. And between 1992 and 2005, they had seven broken arms. One ice skating, one we had a new swing set for a full four hours before an arm was broken on it. So I got to see firsthand 3M's innovation in the cast. So in our own lives, we've seen this tremendous innovation. And medicine has driven it. Medicine drove it first by the fundamental thing that necessity is the mother of invention. Medicine saw a need and asked for it. Medicine saw a need and demanded it. Doctors had patients they couldn't help, they couldn't treat. They had processes that didn't work well. And they asked for it to happen. Doctors have also been the scientists and entrepreneurs that have built the companies that have made this happen. And then doctors have been the adapters that have taken that technology and treatments and moved them into their practice. The greatest threat to human health today is the environmental crisis that we are in the midst of. And that's why about two and a half years ago, after I went to the Arctic, I decided that the most important job for me in healthcare was helping to bring the new clean energy economy to scale. Rising oceans increase waterborne illnesses. Rising temperatures increase insect-borne illnesses. The reduction in arable land leads to malnutrition. The changing uh, air quality, declining air quality, needs to pulmonary problems. The changing atmosphere to skin cancer. And the social disruption in refugees lead to the resurgence of infectious disease and pernicious mental illness. Now, the thing we're very lucky about is the solutions to these challenges offer so many benefits. Not only does a new clean energy economy help us with global warming, a new clean energy economy as Minnesota native graduate of St. Louis Park Public High School, Tom Friedman says, can lead to the resurgence of American prosperity by creating the kind of green jobs across the whole spectrum for our economy and developing 
export-led capacity that captures our research and innovation. And thirdly, the new clean energy economy by making energy more local increases security in the world. By improving the likelihood of peace in the Middle East, given the commodity dependent pressure that the fossil fuel economy places on that region. So three great goals achieved together. Reduction of the worst impacts of global warming, prosperity, security, and I'd add a fourth. Improvements in our health. Not only because we can avoid all the bad things that I just talked about, but also because if we're more active, if we're eating more local food, we're walking, riding the bike, all the things. We, there's that wonderful uh, article in this weekend's Financial Times about the British researcher who in 1949 first documented the link between activity or inactivity and heart disease by looking at the bus conductors versus the bus drivers on the London buses and realizing that the difference in activity between being a bus driver and going up and down the stairs and helping people get in and being the bus driver at the wheel, sedentary, resulted in a different uh, profile, a different likelihood of getting heart disease, and different life expectancy. So being more active will be better for us. Now, I don't think the medical community is going to be the driving force behind wind energy or putting wind turbines up. But I do think the medical community is going to be the driving force around clean technology, one of the key communities that make this happen. Clean technology is very important. It's the retooling of existing industries. It's the re-engineering of ways that we do things now so that we use less energy, release less carbon, and yet do things in a better way. That is what the medical community can bring to this. Let me give you a couple examples. Examples that are important because we are at such an early stage in this most important economic transformation of our lifetime. There's a company in Santa Barbara called InTouch. I had the pleasure to visit there last year. InTouch has created a wireless, mobile, remote access robot that literally allows a physician to be in two places at once. A physician at a remote control station controls the robot, and the robot moves freely around a hospital room or doctor's office, conversing. It's untethered. It can just move right around conversing with a patient, the family members, and hospital staff. And in that conversation, the physician in the remote control access room is really on a TV screen at eye level. And after a while, as I've watched this in use, the people in the hospital room sort of forget they're talking to someone who's remote. They sort of forget there's a robot underneath this TV screen. So what it allows is the right physician to be able to guide a patient's care and help a nurse or a physician on site, whether it's 50 miles away or 250 or 850 or more, make decisions about a patient's care by being there in the room in that way, having a conversation. So you can call that a medical device. You can call it an information technology that has a medical application. You can call it a part of a medical supply. But you can also call it a clean energy technology because it means that a physician doesn't have to travel regularly or at short notice or in some kind of way to be at a patient's side, yet can be highly effective. But after they took me through it and we were in their conference room and, and they asked me to think about what other applications it might have in healthcare, 
the first thing that came to my mind was how tired I am, and I bet you are, of the teleconference. You know, where you're on the phone with people and you, you kind of can't see their body language, you can't read their facial expression. And I would like, if there is any person in this room, because, because it's not me, if there's any person in this room has, who has consistently had a good experience with video conferencing, raise your hand. Because the delays, the times it doesn't work, and all those things um, make it very hard. Suddenly, I thought about what would it look like to have a boardroom where instead of the teleconference stuff simply being there for you, you had the opportunity to have at eye level on a TV screen your board members or your colleagues you wanted to talk to. And that screen could swivel to talk to you. That could be really different. That could be really effective. That could help companies save money by avoiding travel. It could reduce the use of aircraft uh, and thereby relieving one of the biggest sources of putting carbon in the atmosphere. Now, why could it be that it's the medical community that drives this innovation? Why wouldn't it be airlines? Or why wouldn't it be conference companies or other people who would seem to be more linked to this? Well, necessity is the mother of invention. And this sort of challenge of how do you get the right doctor to the patient in a remote location so that you can have one way to Denny's slide of decreasing that 17 years between when we know something good and when that good thing gets applied in practice. That may be the route that this happens. The airlines may say, well, we want to, actually, we want people to fly. We've got to protect that business. Conference people may not just be innovative enough. And there are lots of other examples. The interesting work done in nanotechnology around medicine could have application in cleaning landfills or cleaning oceans. The development of biodegradable medical implants could have applications in biodegradable household supplies. The opportunity that Kaiser and others are using to develop green bu buildings could have application in that setting. The development of new forms of ultrasound may make healthcare even local and necessitate less travel. And David just talked to you about your power under your table. Who of us has not experienced the frustration of a cell phone battery going dead or a laptop battery going dead at the wrong moment? Who has not searched for an outlet at an airport terminal? hoping to get a little charge before going on the plane. Well, of course, in medicine, batteries are pretty important in a lot of areas, sometimes kind of a matter of life and death to keep a battery working for a patient. So who's to say that the innovations around batteries that come out of medicine won't be important for all the reasons we need batteries to capture energy and preserve energy that comes from the sun and comes from wind? meaning it's powerful but not there all the time. So medicine, out of necessity, has developed some of the greatest industries and capabilities in our time. Now with this new challenge, I predict that the medical community will be an engine of innovation around our new clean energy society. And David, when you're hosting this future conference on innovation in the clean energy economy, I'll really look forward to being there. Thank you very much.